Thanks for having me. Explain to us uh, the uh, labor force participation rate, how they measure it. It moves a little bit month to month, usually not all that much, but this was a fairly significant drop. Why? So the labor force participation rate measures the number of available workers. So that's going to be employed workers and unemployed workers. So whenever we see people joining the labor force or dropping out of labor force, that's going to push this number up and down. What we saw this month in December was that there weren't really a lot of workers who were joining or dropping out. It was pretty much flat for unemployment. So we had gains in employment. We had workers uh, gaining in employment, but we also had some workers entering the labor market. We had we had a decrease in the number of workers who were re-entering the labor market. So the labor force participation rate has kind of been holding steady since about August. We occasionally see dips and we occasionally see spikes, but it's been pretty steady, which suggests that we've exhausted labor force supply. So, so when I see the number 62.5, that is, is that then a percentage of all the people who are working or seeking work as a percentage of the total working age population or what? That's right. Okay. God, I knew something for a change. That's amazing. So does this in and of itself suggest that the labor market is getting tighter or likely to be tighter, which would put pressure on wages as companies go out and compete for labor, which would put pressure on economy, uh, on, excuse me, on inflation, which would then put pressure on the Fed to keep interest rates higher than they might otherwise. That's right. But I think with the labor force participation rate, it's important to zoom out for a second. Okay. It's been declining for a while, for about 10, 20 years. So we've just seen a, a kind of a secular decline in labor force participation Is rate. Is that demographics? Part of that has to do with the fact that we are getting older. The population is aging. I mean, the aging population is one of the reasons why we keep seeing healthcare post strong jobs reports, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing uh, the population aging. There are going to be long term consequences of that. Right now, employers are still dealing with the aftermath of the pandemic where they didn't have enough workers once demand shot back up. That has started to regulate, normalize a lot more. So for, for employers, they're still seeing a lot of applications. At LinkedIn, we're seeing applications per applicant up about 16% compared to last year. So there are still people looking for work. They may be currently at employers. They may not just be unemployed at the moment. Corey, quick question about wages. This was a big topic of discussion last hour or debate. Uh, the ADP report is running a little softer than the government's reading. Which this, of course, obviously all comes to bear on, on whether the Fed needs to respond to higher wage inflation. What would you tell us is going on on that front? So what we're seeing right now in this December report is that there's a bit of acceleration in wage growth, nominal wage growth. There may not be much there, actually, because this, again, this is average hourly wages, and that depends on the composition of workers. When we see lower wage workers either dropping out of the labor force or losing their positions, that's going to raise the average level of wages. So there is this composition effect in the average hourly wages measure that we get from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So I wouldn't say that this one month read is too worrisome. What we would worry about is if we continue to see prints where wage inflation is running above 4 percent, because there are concerns that that might be feeding into price inflation. Right. Although one part of the granularity that I guess we're getting from ADP is this idea that when people switch jobs now, the increases, the wage hikes are getting are not that pronounced. Certainly nothing like we saw a year ago. Um, so that was an important source of wage inflation, but it looks like it's going away. Right. So we have seen that wage inflation is up when you change jobs. Typically, one way to get to make gains, right, is by changing jobs. If your current employer doesn't want to pay you more, find a new one. So we're actually seeing folks gearing up this January to look for new positions because January is typically the month where people start their job search. And we've asked people at Link we've asked our members at LinkedIn if they are going to look for a new position, even though less people are quitting. And it seems like a lot of folks are considering uh, finding a new position. About 40 percent of our members surveyed. Uh, and that depends on what generation you're in as well. Younger folks are definitely so, going to be looking for. So let's bring this conversation around third and, and, and into home plate at, with respect to interest rates. Where do you think interest rates will be a year from now, given the trajectory of the economy? There is no reason for the Fed to cut rates because, right now because they see the economy slowing. It doesn't seem to be demonstrating that in 
in any consistent way. So where do you see rates a year from now? So I expect rates to start to be cut possibly in the summer. So a year from now, we might see rates get in that 3 and 4% range. Really what the, the Fed, Fed funds is trying, rate? The Fed funds rate? Fed, the federal funds rate. That's right. That's so, a pretty dramatic decline from where it is now, five and a quarter, five and a half. Well, the Fed is going to want to get ahead of the curve. There's still a lot of monetary tightening in the pipeline. We have a lot of fixed mortgages. We have people who get their wages only taken once a year. I only get a wage increase once or twice a year. So there's a lot of tightening that the Fed's already done that's in the pipeline. And what they're going to want to do next year is get ahead of that curve and start to introduce some liquidity back into the economy in order to keep things going.